Hello. So this verse of Aryabhata is very short. So usually it said that the meaning of this, what the Aryabhata means, is to be made clear from the other books. The later books are by Bhaskar one and who wrote a commentary on the work of Aryabhata and also Brahma Gupta and others. So, the meaning of this essentially is the following that we have to make 24 divisions of the first quadrant. So, angle of 90 degrees you divide by 24 and then you make 24 angles in our language that x1, x2, x3, x4, these are considered as r sign of the angle. So, r is the radius and this radius is taken as 3, 4, 3, 8 for a specific reason and then r sin theta. So, sin, sin theta is the value of x1, value of x2, etc. divided by r that is 3, 4, 3, 8. And Aryabhata gives a recurrence for these values of x1, x2, x3, x4 and so on. And <clears throat> the recurrence, I think this I have to shift maybe here. Okay. Now Aryabhata declares D1, D1 is the difference. Uh, so I can say that it is D1 is the difference between X1 and X0. Now X0 is taken for convenience that is angle 0. So sine of 0 or R sine 0. So X1 is X1 minus 0 that is actually D1. So D1 is the difference between X1 and X0. So although we write D1 equal to X1, the reason for that is like this. Then D2 is x2 minus x1 and these are actually initial values we should know these values and from that recurrence uh, that is used is dn plus 1 is equal to dn minus xn upon x1 into d1 minus d2. This is the recurrence of Aryabhata. Now probably Aryabhata writes it uh, doesn't write this d1 minus d2 in the verse but it is understood that it is D1 minus D2 and many authors have written it, written the recurrence in this form. So D1 minus D2 actually comes out to be 1 in the case when you are dividing the angle of 90 by 24. In that case D1 minus D2 <coughs> because D1 is 225 and D2 comes out to be X1 minus 1 which is 224 and their difference is actually 1, D1 minus D2 is 1. So if you put it here, then the formula for Aryabhata becomes dn plus 1 is equal to dn minus xn upon x1 out of which x1 is uh, sine of this angle theta 90 upon 24 and uh, Aryabhata has found it separately as 225 uh, means this is r sine theta and actual value of sine theta or sine 90 upon 24 is 225 divided by 3438. So uh, initial values are for sine of theta and sine of 2 theta. Uh, correspondingly, uh, D1 is uh, actually these are for R sine. So R is radius, radius is 3438. So R sine theta that is x1 uh, and r sin uh, 2 theta that is x2 and d2 is x d2 is x1 minus 1 that is actually uh, let me see d2 is x1 minus 1 is 220 no this is uh, yeah this is 224 and x2 is actually x2 is x1 plus d2 that is it is 449 that is x2 x2 is 449 these are initial observations 
for the recurrence that d1 and d2 and we have to get the remaining d3 d4 etc uh, by the recurrence relation that is given here so the idea of aryabhatta is you uh, remember this d1 and d2 and from those you calculate the remaining is a possibility otherwise if you don't want to do calculations then the remember the whole table of aryabhatta that is remember these d1 d2 d3 d4 etc up to d24 so aryabhatta gives a verse for you to remember all these 24 values now the question is this formula of aryabhatta is it approximate formula or it is exact formula <laughs> that is a question uh, because sometimes he might have done some adjustment etc but it so happens that this formula of aryabhatta is exact that is one thing that formula is exact is top on, yes so now this i will assume uh, huh. so the values of sign values are given by these numbers starting from uh, 225 uh, and the differences of sign values are written here they are 225 224 222 etc so this is 225 is d1 224 is d2 222 is d3 and so on and these di are actually decreasing that is the idea and uh, remembering these numerators they are numerators for the denominator 3438 remembering different these numerators is difficult because they are larger number three digit and four digit numbers so aryabhatta suggests that you remember the differences and then calculate when you require the values of uh, sin theta sin 2 theta etc and these values are 224 220 uh, 225 224 and so on and for example sin 2 theta is uh, 225 plus 224 so that is 449 then again the difference between these two values is given here that is 222 so if you add 222 to this you get 671 like that if you know the first number 225 and know the differences then you can calculate all these sign values that is the idea so all these sign values they are put up uh, so this is the formula and you can calculate uh, so this is the way of remembering the sign table so Aryabhatta, what he does is he uses uh, this uh, special method. So, writes the numbers in base 100. That is the idea. And the two digit numbers are obtained by this method by using the letters. Ka, ka, ga, ga, nga. So, ka is 1, ka is 2, ga is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 10, this is uh, this uh, is actually 10. Then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Now, after that, Aryabhatta jumps to 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 18, 90, and 100. So, uh, using the numbers from 1 to 25 and the numbers 30 to 100. He constructs the remaining numbers, two digit numbers. And then larger numbers for that, he uses A is 1, E means 100. So, for example, Ki, if I want to understand what is Ki, so Kha is 2, and then you multiply by 10 raised to 2 because Ki is used, so E is used, E means 10 square, so 100. So, this is 200, Ki is 200. And ma, ma is 25. So ma and ki that becomes 225. That is the idea. Then bhaki. So bhaki, bha is here 24. And kha and ki. So that is 200. So 224 is the second number. Similarly, bhaki, bha is 22. Ki is 200. So 222. That is the third number. So, if you remember this verse, then you can get all these 24 numbers from this. For example, this ch, ch 
is here seven. So it's seven, and this is exactly seven here. That is the last number. Then pho. So pho is twenty-two in the nomenclature of Aryabhata. So pho is twenty-two written here. But then pta is there. So pta is pho and t. So pho is twenty-one, and t that is sixteen. So sixteen and twenty-one you have to add because both are adjoint with a. So they are just usual numbers, and you add them and you get thirty-seven. This is the idea. Then cl, if you want to understand what is cl, cl, cl. So cl is one only, and l is thirty, forty, fifty. So fifty plus one that is fifty one. So that is how you can uh, understand all these numbers. So basically, two digit numbers you have to get from uh, this table. Two digit numbers. And then, so basically, he is writing in in uh, base hundred. That is how you can understand that uh, ten square, ten raised to four. These are your uh, higher powers, powers of hundred. And from that, you can write any number. That is the idea. So you can go up to ten raised to sixteen. And then there is a mention that suppose you want larger numbers than this also, then. You go ahead with uh, the same a uh, e etc. Same, and from the context you understand that you are really dealing with a number like ten raised to twenty two and so on. So same because you are short of now these a uh, e etc. So you use them again. So ten raised to eighteen means again a, uh, and so on. So then from the context you have to understand in that case if you use. If you really want to use very large numbers, then so that is basically the idea. Okay. Uh, no, part larger numbers means some other context. Here it is enough. Here there is no problem. But in some other context means Aryabhata tells you. That uh, Mahayuga means forty-three lakhs and twenty thousand, so many years. In one Mahayuga, forty-three lakh and twenty thousand years. So uh, four yugas make one Mahayuga. So in that period, how many revolutions of the planets are there? So if you want to describe that, he requires very large numbers. But still, that is uh, taken care of by ten raised to sixteen. So even that is taken care of. So we don't require. Is the assumption that axes are all planets are in the same line? That is what Aryabhata says. But uh, initially he uh, thinks that I mean, though all the planets are in the uh, same straight line. So far away. Ah, means you can. He decide. He thinks like that. Uh, or uh, um, and accordingly, yeah, he assumes that kind of thing, and uh, then finds out the revolutions. And if the revolutions are integers, now he gets the answer in integers, and uh, then uh, they may almost be in the same line uh, because the number of revolutions is an integer. But it can be fractional also, or some such problems are there. <laughs> Maybe they are very close if their calculations are correct. And <laughs> so anyway. And uh, is there any relationship between the circumference? Now the R is taken to be simple three eight, huh. and the circumference. Yeah, there is a relation that I can explain why it is three four three eight. So if you the actual. Value of R is three four three seven point seventy five actual value, uh, which he rounds to an integer. So three four three eight. So therefore, there is an error in denominator, but there can be error in numerator also, and it may get adjusted sometimes. <laughs> It's possible, uh, and because uh, he only wants to use integers, there is going to be error in the value of sign. But 
people have found out that this error is very small. Uh, in the sign table of Aryabhata, there is again a question whether uh, there is a better integer which approximates the sign correctly. This question is also there. And people have found out by computer calculations, I mean actually write down the value of sign and calculate and so on. So at two places, uh, there is a better answer. For example, this 210 should be 211. If you uh, make that correction, then the corresponding answer that gives you a better value of actual sign. At 210, that is the problem. And there is a problem at one more place, uh, which I have forgotten. Probably 191. 191 should be 190. Means two that should be smaller. So one ninety one should be one ninety. Kala, ha, kala the Yeah, yeah, that I will explain. So kala actually is arc. So uh, now we are uh, actually using this angle, etc. But the Indian mathematicians they used to say that the sign corresponding to an arc of a circle. So that's why directly it comes in radians, whatever it is. So Kalardha Jaha. So if I have any figure, I don't remember whether there is any, maybe I have written a, drawn a figure somewhere. Ha, see here, Kalardha Jaha. So there is a, there is an arc first of all here. And there is a card. Kala is this, this is the Kala or Chap and then there is a Kala, so Kala Ardhajya, Kala Ardhajya means Ardhajya, so Ja means card, Jala Jiva Manto Marathi, Ja Kiva Jiva, so this is card and half of this is this, so this becomes sign of this angle theta, this angle, so this is it is not the angle made by the arc at the center, but it is, as we know, it is, uh, if you draw the circle, and this angle is equal to angle in the circle, actually, in the full center. Ha. Angle subtended by, uh, this means uh, uh, angle, this is the angle at the center. That is actually, uh, the whole angle is 2 theta. But angle, this theta is equal to, if you want to connect it to this card, then this makes an angle theta with all the remaining points on the circle. If you want to connect it to the arc, then that angle is, it is half of the angle at the center. So if this is 2 theta, because you will say this is angle chap or card, this is 2 theta and that angle is theta, angle uh, in the whole circle. And then what is the sign of that? So that R sign is nothing but this uh, half of card. Okay. So Kalardha Jaha. So the values of these Ardhajya, they are given by this. That is the idea. So, so that's why. Yeah. We have taken that circumference to be something by the yeah, yeah, that I will tell again. So, if you take, uh, if you take 60, uh, this 360 degrees, uh, then each degree is uh, 60 minutes. Each degree is equal to 60 minutes. So, if you multiply 360 and 60, you get 21600. 21600 is the number of minutes. Now, I have another slide for that. Probably not this. Uh, no, not here, unfortunately. But uh, now what is the, so if the radius is, or you find the radius, 
uh, if the one minute is equal to one unit, let us say one one uh, minute that are corresponding to one minute is suppose one unit. Then the circumference of the circle will become two one six zero zero so many units. That is the circumference. Uh, now, if the circumference is uh, 2 pi r, the, then the radius is r. So, you should divide by uh, 7 roughly, 7 point something. If from the circumference you get the radius, that radius comes out to be 3437.75. So, suppose circumference is 21600 by the assumption that 1 minute corresponds to 1 unit of length. Then the total circumference is 21600 units and the corresponding radius if you want to find then you should divide by 2 times pi. 2 times pi is 2 into uh, 3.1416 something like that. So divide by almost 6. So 21 upon 6 is 3 roughly that 3, 4 etc. it will come. So radius is uh, roughly 3, 4. 37.75, which he takes as 348. So that is the exact connection. And if we take 60 degrees angle, huh. then that part also is the radius. The 60 degrees. Huh. Yes. That part, yes. 60 degrees, if you take uh, the angle of 60 degrees, uh, then uh, we have uh, 3600, so many minutes. And therefore, length of the arc is 3600. And the uh, radius is that, that chord, if you want, that is 3437.75 because that chord is equal to radius. So there, 3600 is the arc for 60 degrees and the chord is 3437.75 roughly. Okay, so I think except for that calculation, which actually I had tried the calculation, but somehow while, while saving there was some problem. So that whole thing <laughs> has disappeared. So I couldn't bring that. So I will probably include it later. Okay, so this thing now it is complete. Uh, only thing is I have not, uh, I have not. Uh, explain the meaning of this as per uh, Aryabhata, uh, but it is roughly like this. And what happens is in this formula, uh, d1 minus d2, that is 1 for 24, and Aryabhata writes only that formula. So d2 is equal to d1 minus uh, x1 upon x1 into 1. And in general, dn minus plus 1 equal to dn minus xn upon 225. x1 is 225. And this is forgotten. This is 1 only. So the formula becomes only this. That you have a new value of uh, this xn. Using that, you can find out xn plus 1 from this formula. That is the idea. So I think that finishes this explanation for sin nx. But the expression is exact. That is what we have. Twenty-four parts. The reason is that uh, you should take sufficiently many parts so that you can find out the value of sine. That is one thing. I mean, there are various reasons of this type that. Uh, if you make a table of one de zero degrees, one degrees, two degrees, that will become too much for remembering. So, uh, so everybody has done like this. That twenty four is some convenient number, uh, and in those parts you are making. And once you make this table of ninety eight point twenty four, two times ninety eight point twenty four, and so on. So first angle is three degrees and forty five minutes. Second angle is 7 degrees and 30 minutes, that is 7 and a half. 
like that. So if I want one degree, two degrees, etc., then uh, you have to do interpolation. So if you want very rough, then you just uh, divide this difference between say sine x and sine two x by in, in in roughly three parts or four parts, and accordingly in between you can find out. But Bhaskaracharya has actually given a method to find out the intermediate values. So Bhaskaracharya has given interpolation method that I have not uh, actually gone through, but it is there because the same question will be there for everybody that only you remember 24 values and from that, what about the remaining values? Because you may come across the remaining values also. You may come across one degrees and 10 minutes, such things are possible. So in which case you want to find out these sign values and you can find by the method of... Uh, so basically here, if you know correctly something, say sign x and sin 2x for some suitable value of x, then you can find all the rest. So, but that is difficult. Correctly finding sin for a very small angle. Yeah, somehow you should find out that. Means half angle formula, etc. you can use and you can do it. Now, then you just generate all the required values of uh, sin theta. Huh. Uh, actually, Bhaskaracharya has explicitly written the formula for sine of a plus b and sine of a minus b. Huh? Second, second. Bhaskaracharya second has certainly written, but because Aryabhata has written this so exactly, he also knows that. Because this sine cos is our terminology. Okay. But the terminology of this, he will say the chaparda means it is side of a triangle. No. So he is just comparing this uh, sine of this uh, uh, chord corresponding to theta and chord corresponding to 2 theta and the corresponding triangles and what is the relation between these sides that geometrically they can decide and get this formula. Uh, so that they must have done. So this formula because it is explicitly mentioned by Bhaskara Chajya, usually it is known previous to him also. And this exact formula, I just that's why I checked earlier. I also had used half angle formula because I didn't know. So first proof that I gave was using half angle formula. But later on, I understood that you can just use sin a plus b and you can derive it. So that means you must have used that only. <clears throat> so the derivation is, uh, I think it's exactly coming from that. And this sine formula. In, in some way, it, it is known to Aryabhata is what I feel because this is not an approximate thing. Some people doubted whether it is exact or approximate, <laughs> but it happens to be exact formula for uh, dn plus 1 and dn connection. Okay, so this makes complete explanation. And this Aryabhata's method of remembering sign table, only one or two comments for that are that uh, people after Aryabhata did not use this terminology of Aryabhata. Uh, one reason is people say may say it is uh, somewhat difficult. But another reason is this, for example, this skaki. Skaki, if you remember it as skaki or something, slight variation if you do, and because of pronunciation, it is possible. Like, for example, in uh, South India, K and Kh, they are same, you know, like that. So then somebody from South India comes and says this thing, he may uh, actually say it differently, in which case the meaning will change. So it was not very convenient. And therefore, people uh, did not use after Aryabhata, this method of Aryabhata. And they used, usually, if they want to use the system, then they use the Katapayadi system. Then Katapayadi system became very popular and nobody used after Aryabhata this system. But Aryabhata was successful in writing such verses in which he could remember the whole sign table. That is one ad advantage. And similarly, he, he uh, very large number, he must have written later. But the another verse that I have seen is that uh, the number of revolutions of various uh, planets uh, in some, some sense around the sun, you can say, or starting from a specific place and coming to the same place. So such a revelation. 
uh, one can consider. Uh, and those revelations also he has mentioned in only one verse because he is using this special way of uh, writing numbers using the letters. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> now this other things we have actually seen and only last two verses which deal with Uh, huh. This Ax plus B equal to Cy plus D, an equation of this type is to be solved. And for that, Aryabhata has used uh, equation, this uh, verse 32 and verse 33. So these are the last two verses. So <clears throat> the method roughly because Again, it may be uh, somewhat difficult to actually see the verse and find out the meaning. So I'm trying to explain it in terms of these variables like Ax plus B equal to Cy plus D. These numbers A, B, C, D are positive quantities. And what is the meaning of this? Ax plus B equal to Cy plus D means uh, you have a number N which you have to find out. <clears throat> if you divide the number by A, then the remainder is B. <clears throat> And if you divide the same number by C, then the remainder is D. So these remainders, they are positive numbers or they can be zero. And the divisors, they are positive quantities, positive integers. So there is a tacit assumption here that, that A, B, C, D, they are positive integers, except that this remainder can be zero. And uh, but this Aryabhata assumes, for example, that B is bigger than D. One of the remainders will be bigger than the other. Because if they are equal, then you can just cancel them. And then you have a simpler equation which can be directly solved. Because N is equal to A times X. So you know X means, you, A, A means you can find X immediately. So remainder is zero, there is no problem. Uh, B, and, B and D. No, actually some mistakes I was making. But you can manage that thing. If B and D are equal, then it can be managed. So he's assuming B is bigger than D, which is a difficult, more difficult question. So uh, the method is you divide the divisor, uh, which gives greater agra. So this B and D, they are called as agra, remainders. These remainders are called as agra. So <clears throat> A and C are the divisors. You are dividing N by A or you are dividing N by C. So these are divisors. So suppose B is larger than D. Then this A you should divide by C. That is the starting point. That you divide a by D. And the, then the new remainder becomes, so we are forgetting the remainders initial. These remainders B and D we are forgetting. They are using, they are used at the end. Initially you look at only A and C, which are the divisors of capital N. Okay, you look at only A and B. So now you divide A by B, find the remainder, then B you divide by that remainder and go ahead. So this is like GCD algorithm procedure. And uh, they say that you divide onion. You understand that thing. That's what uh, for Aryabhata, onion is what you divide by what that you understand. So in any case, A is to be divided by C and then you go ahead. And you go up. Now you don't have to go up to the end. That is the speciality of the method of Aryabhata. So Aryabhata says that you go up to the uh, up to any suitable place where you have got even number of divisions. You have done even number of divisions, then you stop. That is the method. Uh, you get sufficiently small numbers which you can deal with. That's what he says. Get sufficiently small numbers which you can deal with. 
because original numbers a c etc can be large and it will be difficult for you to find the solution but if you get small numbers then it will be possible to find you the solution so you don't have to go up to the end like you go in the gcd algorithm of uh, say euclid okay now after that you form a chain so now it is better to take an example and then see so suppose i want to solve this problem find a number which leaves remainder 2 when you divide by 34 and remainder 1 when you divide by 13 so here 2 is larger than 1 remainder 2 is larger than 1 b bigger than d so what you should do you should divide 34 by 13 okay now the question is what you will do if left hand side is 13 and right hand side you have 34 remainder are 2 and 1 but now you get a smaller divisor on the left hand side and you should divide 13 by 34 in that case so this appears to be unnecessary operation because if you divide by 13 by 34 then you can divide only the quotient will be zero so why to do this but still as a computer method you should do that <laughs> computer algorithm <laughs> you have to do it and get uh, the device the quotient at zero and so and then you go ahead after then you will arrive at this only that you should next in the next step you will divide 34 by 13 okay now yeah i will explain next time we will stop actually because you have a lecture and the time is also over hmm it's a lecture Okay, so I will just mean, I will do it again next time, but uh, let us just go through it so that so divide thirty four by thirteen, then quotient is two, and remainder is eight. Now this you this uh, division you do not count because we have to count how many divisions are there. And you should stop when you have done even number of divisions, then you should stop. So in that counting, this first division, you do not count. That is the rule. Then uh, you divide 13 by 8, quotient is 1, remainder is 5, divide 8 by 5, quotient is 1, remainder is 3, divide 5 by 3, quotient is 1, remainder is 2. These are even number of uh, divisions and you get 1. So, uh, you, you have carried out even number of divisions, even number of divisions, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then you find out something called Mati. And this is the condition for finding Mati. Mati is a number which is to be found out, Z let us say, Z into remainder, remainder is the last remainder, last remainder is 1. So, Mati is to be taken as 1 and Mati into remainder plus Agranta means difference between the Agras. Agras are 2 and 1, they are the remainders, initial remainders, Agras, their difference is 1. So, Mati should be such that Mati into remainder 1 e plus difference between Agranta is equal is divisible by the Bhajak. Bhajak is last remainder is 2. Okay, last remainder is 2. So it should be divisible by 2. Now, uh, what is the quotient? Quotient, you divide by 2 and get the quotient. Quotient is 1. Uh, here you could as can you take 3 as uh, Mati so 3 into 1 plus 1 is also divisible by 2 so you could as well take 
थ्री एज मती मती कैन बी एनी थिंग एनी सोल्यूशन इज फाइन बट कैन यू टेक मती इक्वल टू टू मती इक्वल टू टू इज नॉट पॉसिबल बिकॉज इफ आई रिप्लेस Mati is one is replaced by two. Two into one plus two minus one is three. That is not divisible by two. So I cannot take mati equal to two. But I can take mati equal to one or three or any odd number basically. That is only thing is we take smallest so that our calculations will be smaller. Okay. Now you make a sequence. The sequence starts with the quotients. There are four quotients, one, 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 because this quotient is to be discarded. First quotient is to be discarded. So the four quotients are there, one, 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 one. After that, you write mati. Mati is one in our case, and then you write this is q actually. Mati followed by q. Q is the quotient, final quotient. Q equal to one. That you write. Now. Once you write this sequence, the rest is by a formula uh, which I call a times b plus c. A times so these suppose I have three numbers one one one. So this is a, this is b, this is c. A times b plus c that is one into one plus one is two. So that two you should write here. And this number one you write here. So two and one I have got, and I take the upper number one and write it here. So I get new triple one two one. So I have this triple one one one. Then one into one plus one is two, which I write here. This mati I have written as it is here, and I take the upper number one here. Okay. So one two one I have new triple. Again, a into b plus c I use one into two plus one is three, which I write here. Then this two I am just copying as it is here, and take the upper number one and write it here. So I get new triple. In the new triple, I use a into b plus c that rule, a b plus c, a b plus c. So what is one into three plus two? That is five. That is written here. Then this three is copied here as it is, and take the one from here that is written here. So one five three. Now what is next step? One into five plus three is eight that is written over here. Five is copied here, but that is not actually necessary, and that is the end of our calculation. And eight is the value of x. This last number eight is the value of x. And once you get x, you can also get y because you get the number now. So thirty-four into x plus two is two seventy-four is the answer. Now, if I had to stop at this stage itself, I do only two calculations: this and this, right? That is an even number. So only two calculations, even number. Then you could have uh, used the same method. You have to find mati. So uh, mati into remainder in this case is three. Okay, and that remainder you take, and mati in this case is three. That is the calculation for this. Uh, If you stop at two calculations, two divide two divisions, then mati is three. Three into three plus one uh, is divisible by five. This is the bhajak. Bhajak or divisor is five in this case because that is the last divisor. Because you have done only two calculations, so last divisor is five. So mati into baki that is remainder plus agrantar is one. Is divisible by five and the quotient is two. Quotient is two. So now I will write in this. My this is another calculation. I will write first two divisors one and one. Below that I will write mati which is three, and below that I will write quotient was two here. Q equal to two. So I get this sequence. Again I use a b plus c rule. 
1 into 3 plus 2 is 5. Then I am letting this. So I have now these three numbers 1, 5, and 3. So 1 into 5 plus 3 is 8. So I have not written like this, but I say just use this sequence and form a new sequence. So 8 and 5. Again, you get answer as 8. So this is the method. Uh, so this is kind of arithmetic means uh, we are adding there x etc but uh, you have to follow this method and get these numbers and the top value that is the value of x and from that you find the value of y this is a method of uh, aryabhata bhaskaracharya actually goes up to the end like this is the algorithm <laughs> that you have studied that thing so, but in the Aryabhata method, you can stop anywhere, whenever you get even number of terms and uh, you can solve the equation that is written there. That equation is equivalent to the previous equation. That is the idea. And you have a smaller solution. Okay. Yes. Then the final answer will remain the same. The calculations are like, suppose you stop at, at this stage, okay, only you do this thing. Then what is the final Baki? That is 3. What is the final divisor is 5, okay. Now I have to find the Mati. So Mati calculation is given here. Uh, Mati is 3. So our equation is this, Mati into Baki plus Agrantara should be divisible by Bhajaka. So Mati means Z, Z into Baki is 2. Uh, Baki is 3 here, right? This was Baki 3. So 3 into Z plus Agrantara is 2 minus 1, that is 1. Same Agrantara. So 3 into 3 plus 1 is actually divisible by 5. It's just by trial. So Mati should be equal to 3. 3 Z plus 1 is divisible by 5. That Z we have to find out. 3 Z plus 1. This is divisible by 5. 5, yes. So Mati I can take as 3. But I cannot take Mati as 4 or something because that will not be divisible by 5. Now, once it is divisible by 5, huh? yeah. Which you can solve. Huh? You can stop and you can do the calculation, you can get the answer. In the, once you get the value of x, you substitute it here, you get n, you can get y. If you can find, yeah. Yeah, with the numbers are very large, then instead of uh, uh, two steps, you may have to go to four steps or eight steps like that. But possibility is if you somehow look upon a solution to that problem, that this this problem, this should be divisible by Bhaja. If you can arrive at it, you can stop anywhere. <laughs> anywhere you can stop. So what happens is this Bhaja, they are, they are becoming smaller in some sense. So you can get some good bhajaka which is sufficiently small, you can stop there after even number of steps. And you can do the calculations and get it. Yes. So, we stop here. In Karu? Uh, 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 uh,